G'day, I'm Yuki Sandev, and in part three of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be looking at the Unity interface. Okay, so we've got through the boring installations and now we are ready to have a play around in Unity. If you've come from my previous two vids on installation, then you already have a fresh 3D project to work with. Otherwise, just create a new 3D project from your hub. Now, I kind of thought about this for a second and I asked myself, just how beginner do I have to get? I'm trying to find a balance between going too fast and showing enough detail. So I hope I'm getting it somewhat right. In this day and age, everyone seems to be at least a little bit clued up. I mean, at least everyone has played a 3D game, right? The editor itself can be learnt pretty quickly with a little playing around anyway, so I'll just cover a few quick things on navigation and the tools mainly in your scene window. My first video has already covered the windows and their purposes, so I'll skip that. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, to, uh, so to start off with, let's uh, put something in the scene to look at. Um, so right click on your hierarchy and select 3D object and then cube. Uh, click the cube in the hierarchy to select it and then click the three dots in the transform section of the inspector and select reset. This just resets all of the transform values to zero and the scale to one. Right click the cube in the hierarchy and select duplicate. It's kind of the same as doing a normal copy and paste operation but it takes out the extra step and copies and pastes it for you. Uh, now, because both cubes are in the same location, you're only going to see one. So click the move tool and then click one of the cubes that you see in the scene and then drag it away from the other one so that they're separated. Uh, just a side note, uh, if you can't see a cube after creating it, uh, then your scene might be a little bit off. So select the cube in the hierarchy and press shift and hold it down and push F to focus on it. Okay, into navigation. Alrighty, so first of all, uh, your middle mouse wheel can be used at any stage in the scene to zoom in and out of the scene at any time. Clicking and holding your right mouse button inside the scene changes your cursor to an eye and controls movement around the scene. If you hold the right mouse button down, you can drag the mouse to the left and right and up and down to rotate your view. You can also use your WASD keys to move around the scene, similar to kind of movement in a game. Uh, you can use the Q and E keys for up and down movement. Also, while you're holding your right mouse button down, if you spin your mouse wheel, you can change the acceleration of your movement. Um, now, this is acceleration, not speed. So the longer you stay moving, the faster you'll end up going. So what you're changing is just how fast you accelerate. Um, click and hold your middle mouse button uh, to move the scene left and right and up and down. Um, and at any time you can set focus on a particular object in the scene by selecting the object in the scene and pushing F on the keyboard. Similar to the hierarchy one, but you don't have to push shift because you are already in the scene. Um, yeah. So now we'll move on to the scene toolbars. So at the top left of the scene window, there's a few items up here you might like to play with. Uh, the first one is a grid view for toggling the grid off and on. Uh, you can choose which grid you want to see. So you might like to have a play with that. Uh, the second one is a snap and increment tool. Um, this might be useful if you are indeed a beginner and you are building structures with kind of primitives. Um, you can use a snap feature to snap things together. So this I think is set to one. Yes, it is. So if I go here and move this guy here and then move this guy along, he will snap right onto him. And you can see down here in the game view, there's no seam. They've snapped together perfectly. Uh, you can change increments. Um, so this guy here, if you look at his uh, X value is one. And when I move him one step, he jumps to two. If I was to change this to 0 0.5 and take out all the other extra zeros. And then do the same thing. The increments will now be 0.5. So you can see the X up there is changing by 0.5. So uh, yeah, you might find that kind of useful. Um, if you at any stage want to reset any of this stuff back to its default, you can just select these three little dots here and reset. And that is done. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for that side. Now onto the other side. 
Actually, before we go on to the rest of the toolbar up the top, let's uh, do the floating one that's in the scene, which has got a few basic tools. First one is the hand for moving the editor view. Uh, it's kind of similar to the middle mouse button. Then you've got the move tool to move the selected object. You've got the rotate tool to rotate the selected object. And the scale tool for scaling the selected object. Uh, the rect tool, this is kind of just for UI items. Uh, we'll get to this in another video. You can skip this for now. The transform tool, which basically gives you all of the tools above, um, resizing, moving, and rotating. Um, sometimes other tools might appear depending on what you have selected. Uh, I.e. if you select the cube, then you will see a bounding volume box there. Uh, you would use this to edit trigger boundaries more often than not. Um, so we'll get that in a later video as well. Um, since we're still in the scene, you've noticed when you click the move or rotate or scale or transform tool, you are given colored handles to manipulate the object with. Might have already noticed that each color represents the axis that you're playing with. Um, also to note that the move tool, uh, the arrows are pointing in the positive direction. So if you notice when I pull the blue line in the direction of the arrow, it's adding to the Z value in the inspector. Uh, for that object and when I pull it in the opposite direction it subtracts from the Z value or if you pull the red one it's the X and so on and so forth. Okay now back to the tools at the top. So there's the draw mode. Uh, this allows you to change your view depending on your needs. Uh, try toggling wireframe just to uh, remove the shaders and show the frames stuff like that. 2D toggle uh, is pretty much what you think it is. It changes your display and handles to 2D mode. Uh, if you click it and try to move a cube, notice that you can only move it left and right and up and down because in 2D there is no forward and back or depth. Lighting is pretty self-explanatory, toggles it on and off. Audio is the same. Uh, effect toggle, this has a few items in here that you can switch on and off. Uh, you could try turning skybox off and watch the sky disappear. Uh, we'll get to skybox a little later on. Scene visibility, uh, you probably won't need this just yet, but it basically hides or unhides any objects marked in your hierarchy as hidden. It's uh, useful for complex scenes or something like if you had furniture you needed to move in a house and a roof was in the way with a bunch of other stuff, you could mark them all to hide and then use that toggle to hide them. The scene camera, uh, you can make your preferred editing layout with this guy. Um, if, you have, if you do have a play with it and you need to reset it, Click the cog icon and select reset. Gizmo visibilities. Well, from here you can toggle various gizmos on and off. Um, you already have a couple of gizmos already in your scene, the camera and the light. And one last thing for the scene window is the orientation tool. Uh, so this tool for the beginner can be a royal pain in the behind. It takes some getting used to. Um, if you've already had some exposure to 3D, then this will be probably a lot easier. Um, first of all, uh, if you find the tool a little hard to see, you can right click it and show background. Um, click the middle square to toggle the view type. You've got a couple of view types, orthographic and perspective. Um, if the X, Y, Z stuff is confusing, then you can uh, right click the tool and select the view you want with the kind of English easy speak. Um, there's top, front, left, right, etc. Um, just use those in the meantime. The whole 3D world and directions uh, might be overwhelming for some at first, but it does get easier. Um, just practice moving things forward and back and up and down. Uh, generally in a perfect world, X axis would be left and right, Y would be up and down, and Z would be forward and back. Um, but that, of course, is not always going to be the case, uh, especially when you start importing models into your project and they were exported from 3D editors the wrong way around or upside down, left is right, right is left. Uh, sometimes you try to move something on the z-axis and rather than going forward and back it goes up and down it can get rather crazy um, there's actually a good piece to read on the subject of orientation by Nick Mower um, I'm leaving a link in the description for that when you get time to have a read um, but after a while you soon get a grasp of it all okay so that's pretty much it for the scene stuff I'll leave the rest up to you to find out in there um, but I think at this stage it might be all you need at the beginning uh, more will come up during the series
Oh, uh, before I forget, one other uh, quick thing. If you lose one of your overlays or if it disappears for some reason, you can always get it back by right clicking on the tab and selecting overlays and then re enable the one that disappeared. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, just a quick run through a couple of windows. Uh, the game window but it basically shows the game view through the camera and the hierarchy. When you push play, uh, this is the window that's playing. Of course, um, you can play focused or maximized. Maximized won't fill the entire screen, but it is a lot bigger, as you can see. Um, the scale, well, that's pretty much self-explanatory. It's just the zoom. Uh, if you click the game drop down and select simulator, you can choose from various mobile platforms. Good, of course, if you are developing for phones and tablets, uh, just to get an idea of what it would look like on one of those selected devices. Uh, just a quick one with the hierarchy, since you'll pick most of this up along the way anyway. Um, but every new scene by default comes with a camera and a light. Um, well, it has to really, otherwise you wouldn't see anything. Um, but of course, these items can be altered, deleted, re-added, all sorts of things. Uh, in upcoming videos, we'll cover these and more. Um, yeah. So I think I'll wrap it up for this video and remember there is always the Unity manual where you can find more if you click help and then Unity manual to have a look it'll open up a web page. Click on working in Unity and then Unity's interface and you can have a read in there. In the next video we will probably play with Unity's primitive objects and look at changing their properties in the inspector. Um, we'll also add some new properties to them and we'll have a little look at physics. So I hope to see you in the next video.